Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 712. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 711 to 714. In this trick here, we have a bad database, data setup. Uh, this is not the way to set up data in Excel, but nevertheless, lots of people have data like this. Our goal is to take the name and email name and email and put them over here in a column. Now in order to do this you have to look at the data and recognize some patterns. First name, data, and then an email. There's a blank uh, or whatever this name is, a bunch of data. The last thing before the blank is uh, an email. Now the problem, there's a couple problems with this data set and this is just a small teeny data set here. First off, it would be much easier to do if we knew exactly uh, how many um, fields there were in essence, right? Name, address, uh, city, this is in uh, code, and then email. But there's four here, there's five here, and there's even more here. So there's inconsistent number of fields or, or bits of information. The other pattern to note, recognize is that there is a space, luckily, between uh, each record here. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to do this. I'm going to highlight all of this, delete. First thing is, since our pattern is blanks, let's just count blanks. And really, before we even do our two, our name and our email, let's go over and recognize another pattern. Um, we're going to count blank, so this will be one, this will be two, right? And when we get down to the bottom, we'll have to highlight one cell below the last record. But when we extract names, our lookup range is going to start here. Notice we're going to start the blank there. So when we say find the first blank, we'll be able to then add one and get the name. However, when we extract the emails, we'll highlight it this way and one below, and we'll say find the first blank, and then go back up one, and that'll get us our email. So we are going to count blanks, equals, and that'll help us count the records. I mean, yeah, the records. This is a record. This is a record. So the range, and for this first one, I'm going to highlight um, the very first item. And again, this is a small data set. I'm going to highlight one below because I, I need to go one below for this so I can count the exact number of records. Comma, and then I'm going to use double quote for blank for the criteria, close parentheses. So we have six. Now the name. We're going to use the index function. And this is going to be an array formula because we're going to have lots of blanks. We're going to have, you know, whatever row number this is, one, two, three for the names, we're going to start there. So the first element in this lookup range will be blank, and then we'll add one. And then it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six will be the next blank, and then we'll add one and get seven. So we're going to use index to look through this, and then we'll have to, we're going to have multiple uh, row numbers for blanks, so we're going to have to use the small function to extract them one at a time, one at a time as we copy them down. Equals index, and we don't in this particular situation here, we're just going to highlight all of the uh, the exact number of records and copy our formula down. All right, array. The trick here is for the name, we're going to highlight one cell above as of the blank, all the way down, and then stop right there at the exact last piece of data. And I'm going to hit F4 because we're going to copy this down. That's the array. That's the lookup. Now, row number. Again, we need two six, and then whatever as we copy down. So we're going to use the small. And this array right here, we're going to use this exact array right here, copy. But we're going to say if anything, the logical test is going to be anything in that range is equal to blank. Again, that'll be row one, row five, or whatever that is. One, two, three, four, five. That's six, right? What do we want? We're dumping a bunch of row numbers into small, so we're just going to say row. Now, it doesn't matter that it starts with 1 or 2 or 3 or anything, so we're just going to actually just highlight the same range, Control-V. Uh, sorry, I misstated that. That would give us row 7 right now. We don't want that. We want 1, 2, 3, etc. So we're going to subtract row, not row min. And it's going to be this first cell right here. That gives us a 0, though, right? 7 minus 7 
this 7 minus the 7 is 0, so we have to add 1 back in. Now, well, we got to think about this. If we add 1 back in, it gives us 1, 2, let's even look at this, F9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But what do we, we don't, when we get a match, remember the, this right here is going to give us a match right here. So we really don't want to add 1, we want to add 2 to get down to here. So Control-Z, I'm going to add 2. Now I'm going to close parentheses on the if, and let's just highlight this and see. If blank, do the row number, and we're adding 2. So I'm going to highlight just this, F9. Notice I get a 2, a 7, which is exactly what I want for 2, 7, and then the next one is 13 down here. Control Z, do not want to hard code that in. So we have lots of, this right here is lots of row numbers, but we want the first one, the second one, third one, so I have to put comma, and the K is going to be our number incrementer. We use the row function, sorry, rows, and I'm sitting in the formulas in A9, so I'm going to type A dollar sign 9 colon A9. This is perfect because as we copy it down, it'll give us the number 1, the number 2, the number 3 close parentheses on the uh, small. We have our row numbers. The small right here will extract successive row numbers, so we have that, close parentheses. And this is an array formula, particularly because the part that's making us do control shift enter is that. It's expecting a single logical test, but we're giving it lots of trues and falses. So I'm going to with this formula here, control shift and enter. You can see the curly brackets. Now we copy this down, and sure enough, it extracts, and we can test it, the DAP, Karen, etc. as we go down. Now the emails are going to be the s similar, except for we're going to have to offset. Instead of, let's just go ahead and do it, equals index. The array is going to be not from here down, but from here, and then one below the very last record. That way we set up our pattern of blanks, one below the email, F4, comma, and then small, if, anything in this range right here, I'm going to highlight that, copy, is equal to blank, then what do we want? The row number, control V of that whole range, minus the row of the very first one, and it is going to be that one right there. Notice how we're starting in 8, and there's an 8. Now, we've got to think about this. Right now, normally what we do, we add 1, and that's going to give us our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. But what do we want when there's a match? Right now, it would give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And really, we want 1 above. So instead of um, adding 1, I'm going to add nothing. Right? In essence, that would give us a zero for this, but we're never going to get a match there because we started where there's data. So close parentheses on the if, and let's highlight this and see if we get our correct matches, F9. So we get 4, 10, control Z, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So exactly what we want, comma, row, A9, or B9, B dollar sign 9, B9, close parentheses on the small, small, close parentheses on the index, close parentheses on the, uh, oh, the index right there, and then control shift enter. Ooh, we have a problem here. Num means that there's no number there, so, uh, hey, let's do this. Alt, we're going to run formula evaluator and see where the number problem is coming from. It's probably coming from uh, this right here. Let's just highlight this if and see. So if right to there and then hit the F9. It's giving us a 4. Control Z. Oh, uh, S, I made th that problem, th that was supposed to be rows, because that's an incrementer. This will give us one, and then two, and then three. All right, I got my fingers crossed, Control, Shift, Enter, and then double click and send it down. So it looks like we're getting that one, and then that one, 
and all the way down. Ah, but there's a problem. Again, there was two problems with, three problems with this data set. First off, it's not set up with proper field names in the, the column headers and records and rows. Problem number two is that there's not the same number of items in each record. And the third problem is that some of the um, records don't have emails, so they're just out of luck. All right, now we could f amend this right here to search for any time there's not an at symbol and then exclude it, but if it's a huge data set, much easier to not repeat this thing a couple times like we'd have to do. We just come over here with a, our email only column, and this is the one we'll use when we do our mail merge or whatever for sending out the emails. We do the search function, because the search can look through each one of these text strings and see if there's an at symbol. Find text in quotes. We'll use um, at within what text there. Now search will just give us a number, ah, but it gives us a value error, so we're going to have to, because that'll mess up our whole formula. Notice it just says 11, that's the 11th position in the string, in the text string that we see in at. So we want to get rid of that, so we're going to do is this a number? I just forgot to put that parentheses and then double click and send it down. Ah, so perfect. We got a, a true or false for each one of these cells. So we simply say if, and our logical test is that, comma, if it's true, we want this, comma, otherwise, value of false, double quote, or whatever, not available, or whatever you want. All right, so there's how to take a really bad data set, three problems, uh, not set up properly as a database, not the same number of items in each record, um, and some don't even have the bit of information we're after, um, turning it on its side because for sorting or filtering or in particular mail merges, you need data like this. All right, see you next trick.